Okay, good up, good evening. Um, thank you all for joining our Southwest CPC monthly meeting. Um, we had a little bit of a delay, um, so I apologize about that. We'll be going live here shortly once Martisa um, hops on, but in the meantime, we'll just be recording. Um, I would like to call this meeting to order. Um, today's time um, is 6.02. Um, before we get started with our official business as usual, and before I turn over the reins, um, I wanted to go over some housekeeping items. Uh, this is a webinar based meeting and so only the panelists are seen. And so if you have any questions and or comments, please um, place them in the chat. You can also use the Q&A section, um, which also helps us kind of keep track of the questions um, for our CPC council members. If you are interested also in joining the CPC, we are looking for up to five to six members uh, to join our Southwest CPC Council. And so if you're interested, please let us know. You can email Kelly, Mona, um, and one of the council members. You can head over to the, C to the uh, city's uh, website to also um, uh, submit your um, application to become a council member. And um, we are excited for tonight's meeting. We will have, and we do have three um, area command police officers with us joining us this meeting, and we hope to have them as well uh, moving forward. Um, and thank you to our panelists it, for our topic of discussion, which is covering 311, 242 COPS, and 911. I know that we all have quite a few questions on which phone number to use for what call, um, and also other concerns with, with using those phone numbers. Um, but we're excited to have Deputy Chief J.J. Griego, um, who works for the Al Albuquerque Police Department Support Services Bureau, Erica Wilson, um, who works for the Emergency Number Professional and Communications Public Safety, um, she's the executive, and then Carrie Prothero, who is the Division Manager for One Albuquerque. And so with that being said, um, for our agenda, which uh, Mona will take over here, um, shortly, I do want to tr introduce you all to your new chair for the Southwest CPC. Um, we did have a prior chair, Robbie, that we had voted in a couple of months ago, but um, we are happy um, to announce our new chair for the Southwest CPC, Mona Varela. Mona Varela is a native of Santa Fe, New Mexico, moving to Albuquerque in 2015. She has been a resident of the South Valley approximately for 2.5 years and is, and is a small business owner. Um, alongside with her husband, David Varela. They own ABQ Grilling Q, which is a barbecue food truck and catering business. So shout out to <laughs> see how we can have that in the community or you know schedule some time to <laughs> have some barbecue. Uh, Mona had a long satisfying career in state government and retired from the New Mexico Public Regulation Commission in 2010. Uh, where she was the consumer relations director. So she has a very awesome and extensive background. So um, the Southwest CPC will be in amazing hands. And so with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Mona, now, so you can take over the reins with the um, agenda and the, and the minutes and moving forward um, and welcome. Thank you, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, uh, hi, everybody. Again, my name is Mona Varela. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And um, this is my first uh, meeting that I'm chairing, so please bear with me. <laughs> so um, you've already taken care of the housekeeping and all of that good stuff. So let's go move to the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I will motion to approve the agenda. Do I have right. a second? There a second. Okay, um, Andrea, thanks for that second. So all those in favor say aye. If there are no opposition, then the agenda is approved. Okay, now we'll move on to approval of the past minutes. I'll go ahead and, and make a motion to approve the past minutes. Okay, Teresa, thank you for that motion. And a second. Andrea, thank you. If there are no changes to any of the minutes that are substantial that need to be reviewed, then the minutes are approved. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, Commander Barasa. Yes, I see you. Okay, so um, 
thank you for being on. And now we will go ahead and go on with updates from the commander. Good afternoon again. Thank you very much and welcome, Ms. Varela. Welcome thank to you. the Southwest uh, Community Policing Council. We thank look you. forward to uh, your assistance and your cooperation and your co uh, collaboration. So welcome. I know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fit that seat and, uh, very well by the guidance of, of Ms. Garcia. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you everybody for coming today at the at the, at the Southwest CPC. We look forward to talking to all, to all you all and address any concerns from the Southwest Air Command. I did invite um, three officers, but unfortunately two of them can make it because we have other things that were that were going on uh, this afternoon. Uh, so I had to send other people to another another meeting. But I do have um, Officer Vanessa Santiana's log on tonight. <laughs> and also Officer Brenda Solis. Once we get to them, I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves and a little bit of background of them, okay? But thank you, I'm here to answer any other, any other questions. Any questions for the commander? Shall we go ahead and move on to the meet and greet? <clears throat> okay, um, thank you for being here for um, the meet and greet and to give us some information and some insight into the, um, into the department. And I really appreciate, you know, that we're gonna be able to be meeting the officers in the area that are in the area. So um, we'll move on to Deputy Chief JJ Griego. Good evening, everyone. Deputy Chief JJ Griego with the Albuquerque Police Department. Um, I really and truly appreciate the invitation today um, to uh, discuss uh, what I know is a hot button topic in the community, which is 242 cops and 911. Um, what uh, I kind of envisioned is this the point in the presentation you wanted the 242 cops 911, or are we just doing introductions? Um, I think we can go ahead and go with that. Teresa, okay. you want to offer some guidance? Mm -hmm. I believe um, if we could maybe um, allow the the officers that are here um, to introduce themselves, we will for the meet and greet, right? So we have um, Vanessa Santillanes and um, Officer Brenda Solis. Uh, we will be having, as mentioned earlier, three officers or a couple of officers as they are available, obviously, um, to come on. And so it gives the community or our, our Southwest community an opportunity to meet our officers in our Southwest Area Command. And so um, maybe if if you would all like to introduce yourself and, and if you have any questions for those of, in, of us in our community, if you would like to put them in the chat, um, to get to know your officers, um, this would be the perfect time. And then we can go ahead and move over to DC um, JJ Griego. Okay. Officer Santianes, would you like to go first? Sure, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vanessa Santianes. I've been a police officer with the Albuquerque Police Department uh, for about six years now. This is my first year in the Southwest Area Command and uh, I'm excited to be here, so thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Officer Solis. Officer Solis, can you hear us? She may be not able to hear us. Okay. Maybe we can in here and get back to her. Okay. Maybe as we wait for her to come back on. Um, are there any questions from our community um, for our officers that are here um, for our Southwest Area Command meeting? Any questions that you may have um, for them? 
It looks like there's a cute thing. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I just read an article the other day. Um, I live on uh, 98th and Dennis Chavez in that area. And I guess there's been a lot of um, activity with uh, racing cars, doing donuts in the area, blocking off the area with multiple vehicles. Um, and so I, I do know the article says that APD is working on the issue, but it does happen every single night. We hear it every night. Um, uh, can you tell me what, uh, what, what is APD doing to help rectify that? Yes, this is Commander Barasa with the Southwest. Uh, thank you for that question, Ms. Young. Um, that, that information just came to uh, my ears yesterday regarding that location. Uh, are you referring to 98th and Dennis Chavez? Okay. Um, yeah, that wasn't an area that had been reported to us before. So if our community doesn't call us, a call 242 cops or or use the uh, one Albuquerque app to report that kind of stuff or even call 911. Obviously, if, if it is a 911 call, then you call 911. But if it's a, a non-emergency call, you call 242 cops to let us know. Um, we are addressing the, the amount of speeding uh, the, the street drag racing that, that's occurring um, on a weekly basis. So we do have track plans that are occurring where we, um, we do direct our officers to go out there. And we also have a lot of support from our, our traffic division. Uh, they've been supporting us and we do uh, monthly and weekly track plans to address that. But this area of 98th and uh, Dennis Chavez had just came up yesterday. I was notified it. Uh, yesterday. So we are developing a tax plan and we're going to actually direct some of our officers to focus in that area. Dennis Chavez is a state road. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't go out there and enforce traffic, you know, traffic speeding and the other violations under the traffic code. But um, we will address that problem going forward. Uh, but I appreciate for the community letting us know because it, you know, it hadn't come to me via email or in any of the other 311 complaints that we get. Every time there's a 3-1 complaint for the community, as far as anything uh, that is public safety related, we, ad we address. And I can tell you that one has not come across my email, my text messaging, or even into my, my Southwest substation. So um, as of yesterday, I found out about it and we're gonna immediately uh, put some tag plans together. So uh, I, did, I did see the, um, the news clip from channel, from one of the media channels. Mm -hmm. that say that officers show up and if they can get through from block roads, they just right. leave. Um, that's 100% incorrect. Um, oh, I mean, okay. I, I did talk to somebody today that actually was out there, was trying to uh, drive through that area on Saturday night at about one o'clock in the morning. And this person told me, yeah, she was the, the minute five officers showed up with their lights and sirens, she was everybody dispersed. So sometimes, you know, our presence dispersed that activity, but I can tell you, we take racing, drag racing, any violations on the traffic code, very serious, especially when it's, um, when it's causing a, a, a safety concern for all the other motorists. Um, I'm sure at one o'clock in the morning, that area is not very congested with traffic going to the school or to those residents. But if they're blocking the road, uh, I can tell you with certainty, my officers are gonna take action and they're gonna hold people accountable. Of okay. course, so we, we do that on a, on, a, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and a monthly basis. But Ms. Young, just to let you know, that area is going to get some attention now that we know about it. Because, okay. and I'll tell you what happens, um, since uh, so I'm the interim commander for the Southwest, and since I've been there uh, starting in January, we implemented a TAC plan with the support of the traffic division and the support of uh, officers that come in to work uh, overtime, because sometimes we have to... Uh, rely on those officers that come in and work on their overtime. And it's approved by me uh, just to address the speeding and the street racing that's occurring throughout our city, but specifically through my area command. And I can tell you since I first came on, uh, I saw some of that stuff firsthand when I went out there on a Sunday night to work with my officers. Uh, the amount of people that are just conducting that behavior in the area of Central and Atrisco, all up and down Central from from 98th Street to Atrisco. So we've been tackling that area and focusing that area. And what happens when you address one area, well, you know, common sense only tells you they're gonna go somewhere else. They're gonna to move to another area. And they they have, they, you know, we've 
we've been following up. We know the area just west of the substation, right where the Amazon hub is at. They were using those parking lots and those streets too. We're forcing, we're going out there to make sure that, you know, the community is safe and the roads are safe. But I know that they've been moving farther west and farther south. And Dennis Chavez is the farthest south roadway of mm -hmm. the southwest segment. So I can tell you by by this coming weekend, we will have something in place to address that. Okay. So we are addressing it. Perfect. I, I, I really do appreciate that because, yeah, it's every day. Um, well, literally, um, I see it all the time and it's it's really bad. They just uh, speed through 98th up to Dennis Chavez and up and down all the time. And, um, but I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that um, this will be addressed and hopefully it'll um, stop the issues here. Thank you, yeah, we're addressing it. Just so that you know also, that's a good question. Just let you know also our, um, you know, we have implemented and we're gonna about to implement pretty soon at the end of the month, our speed camera enforcement. And that's, that's just down the end of the month is gonna come and it's gonna go through a warning phase. And then finally it's gonna go through actual citations. And uh, from talking to the commander from traffic, one of those uh, one of those uh, fixed ca cameras uh, was planned in the early plan stages to be in the Southwest Ferry Command. Uh, okay. I can't tell you exactly where it's at gonna be right now, but right. it is coming and it'll be here by the end of the month. And also when there's um, complaints like, like that come from the community of increased speeding in certain roadways, we have some mobile cameras that we can actually uh, deploy out there. And they're gonna work the same way um, for the first 30 days of implementation, we're going to go through a phase of just our citizens are going to get warnings, and then after that, they're going to get violations, and every violation um, is going to be a hundred dollar fine. Okay. And this is all that's been approved by our city council, and now implemented by the police department. So those Perfect. things are coming, and and those are certainly help because the only way to change behavior is to sometimes enforce it. Right? Um, sometimes our presence will deter it. But a lot of times, if we take those measures to cite people, arrest people, it will deter it long term. Okay. And and real quick, when you say um, Dennis Chavez is a state road, does that mean um, only state officers can pull people over on that road, or can APD do that as well, or a sheriff? Well, no. The reason I say it's a state road is because um, I can't deploy one of my speed trailers, like one of those speed trailers you see that are deployed throughout the Southwest now. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you've seen them, but I can't deploy a speed trailer in in a state road, unfortunately. Um, oh. I have to have the permission by by DOT and the state representative to do that. But I can tell you that the state the cameras that we're gonna are gonna be owned by the city of Albuquerque. Uh, they're gonna be on our city roads. So those are coming. Um, you know that's gonna certainly change and take and tailor the amount of speeding that that is occurring not only in the Southwest Area Command but throughout the whole city. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Commander, um, we have a couple of questions in the Q&A here. One being, why is there such a long hold time when we call 242 COPS? Um, it says a lot of times it's over 10 minutes on hold. And then a second question by the same person is, will there be more police patrolling around the upper Pat Hurley Park due to excessive speeding, gunshots, et cetera? Yes, yeah, so I, I'll, uh, I'll defer the 911 question to uh, Ms. Wilson when it's time to speak and to Deputy Chief Grego, um, okay. but I'll, I'll answer the second question. Um, as far as the, the speeding on, on Yucca, um, there's actually a speed, a speed trailer out there on Yucca as we, as we speak. I attempted to deploy two of them, but one of them went mechanically down, so there's only one. Um, that actually, that area has gotten a lot of attention uh, from the TAC plans and the directed patrols that I've implemented in the Southwest Area Command. So we are tackling that area. Um, when we look at our stats and our, and our proactive measures, there's a lot of police hours that are actually dedicated to that area around Central and Yucca and North uh, of, of Central on Yucca. Um, we know that some people you know, go to parks to uh, conduct a business that's not legal, so we do make sure that our officers are conducting uh, park patrols periodically and randomly. So they're not scheduled. They just, you know, when they get a chance in between uh, responding to calls for service, uh, they do go out to the parks and make sure that they're conducting welfare checks. So that is, a, that is occurring and it will continue to, to occur. 
Thank you. I have a question for um, Officer Vanessa Santillanes, just to learn a little bit more about her. Um, she mentioned that, um, or you had mentioned that you were part of another AP, APD Area Command. What made you switch over to the Southwest EPC and what has been your experience um, thus far since you've been with um, Commander Barraza? Yeah, so I mentioned um, I've been a police officer with the, this police department for about six years now, since 2015. And I've worked all over the city. I've worked Northwest, um, on the east side, the Valley area. Uh, most recently I was working Northeast Heights and I've never worked Southwest. I've always wanted to. This area tends to fill up fast. Um, this was my first time around that I was able to get a spot down here in the Southwest. I grew up down here. Um, I went to West Mesa High School. I lived in the South Valley for a while, growing up with um, my parents and my grandparents. So I don't live here anymore, um, but I still have family that that still live in this area. And it, you know, it was home to me for a long time. So um, yeah, that was just one of the reasons why. And I've, I've never worked down here. So I, I just, I've always wanted to, so. Great. And you mentioned that it fills up fast. Is that because of Commander Barraza or? <laughs> it's always, yeah. So um, I've heard really good things about working Southwest area for many reasons. Uh, a lot of officers like to work down here. Uh, they take care of us down here. And um, I think the community is, you guys can attest to it, is um, pretty tight knit. I think the people that stay living down here they, uh, they stay living here for a long time and there's a reason why, so. Awesome, thank you and, and welcome. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, um, there's also just one other um, notation here, it says, also, La Bajada Drive Northwest is a street where no good behavior is conducted and is also a no parking anytime street. It really needs attention by APD. Uh, thank you. Could they clarify what part of La Bajada? Because there is a, a roundabout or actually a, a road closure in the La Bajada, which leads to like the Trisco area on the lower end of Pajarly Park, or uh, I know the one on the upper part off of Yucca, it's very short distance. Um, if they could ver if they could clarify for me, that'd be great. But however, with that complaint, I will make sure that my uh, police service aides who, who are dear to my heart and support our officers every day, I will make sure that they visit their um, daily or if not weekly to make sure that they enforce the parking uh, city ordinance. And um, I'm gonna also says thank you for the increased police presence lately. Oh, you're welcome. That was that was my goal when I first got here. So I'm glad I'm we're getting recognition. So our officers are working very, very hard every day, and my supervisors and and also the lieutenants. So thank you for the recognition. Um, I guess we can move on, Teresa. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and go on to Deputy Chief JJ Grego again. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about 242 COPS and 911. Um, what I'll do is I will first have um, uh, Erica Wilson talk about when you should call 242 versus 911 versus 311 and then I will have Carrie Prothero talk about uh, 311 itself and then I'll go into how the 911 system works and some of our challenges, our performance metrics currently, uh, where we want to be at uh, and then some measures that we've taken uh, to address those issues. So uh, Ms. Wilson, if you want to start. Hi everybody, my name is excuse me, Erica Wilson, and I've been with the Albuquerque Police Department for a little over 14 years. The 
all the 911 calls and 242 cops calls come into the same place. We answer 911 first because that's the identified emergency line. It doesn't mean that 242 isn't important, it is, um, but we just answer 911 first. We are, as the chief mentioned, looking at some solutions. We're trying to hire staff and um, we actually have nine people hired for a June class. We have about 18 in training right now. The calls that go to 911 are in progress immediate threat to life involving weapons, involving a, a traffic accident with injuries, you need paramedics, there's something on fire, somebody's got a weapon, those are the 911 type calls. The other calls, or if you're unsure, it's okay to call 911 to see if, it, if you're not sure it's an emergency or not, it's surprising how many people will call 242 cops because they don't want to bother 911. And they'll start the phone conversation with, they start the phone conversation with, um, I'm not sure if this is an emergency or not. And sometimes it is. So if there's any threat to life, 911 call, major threat to property, 911 call, blocking traffic, major interference, it, that kind of stuff, that's a 911 call. 242 COPS calls are intended to be report calls, delayed incident calls, nuisance disturbance type calls. And we also have the Albuquerque um, APD app or ABQ app that people can report incidents and that information comes to us in the 911 center and the 242 COPS center, all the same place. And then we partner well with 311 and they take some of our calls along with all the city calls. So I'll hand it off to Carrie. Hi, thank you everybody for having me tonight. My name is Carrie Propro. I am the division manager for the 311 Community Contact Center for the city of Albuquerque. Uh, I've been with the city of Albuquerque for five years now, and I'm very proud to serve my community through this type of work. 311 is uh, the phone number you should utilize for any non-emergency call or question that you have about the city of Albuquerque. So we take two different types of calls. We'll take general um, FAQs, something very simple, like what's the hour to our biopark or is the pool open today? Um, something very easy such as that. But we also take calls that are service requests where if you have questions for a particular department, how high can I raise the block wall in my backyard? We'll, get, we'll take that information and get it over to our planning department who will help you. Um, some things that 311 takes calls about um, are graffiti sightings. We send those to our partners over at Solid Waste. We'll take animal noise complaints. Uh, we'll get that over to animal welfare. For abandoned vehicles, for example, those are excellent calls that we partner with APD on. You can call that into 311 and we'll get that information over to APD and they're excellent at responding. Um, if it's a zoning issue, then we'll get it over to planning. Uh, homeless encampments, we will take those calls as well. If there's uh, something that needs to be reported and we'll refer to our partners at the Albuquerque Community Safety, but the calls are routed in through us. If it's an emergency, like Erica said, it goes to 911. If it's some sort of a safety issue, we'll ask the caller to please call 242 COPS if it's not an emergency. Um, but for all other city calls, we'll take that information. And we are available through a number of different ways to contact us. You can absolutely call uh, 311 if you're in the city of Albuquerque. If you're outside of the city of Albuquerque, it's 768 2000. And you can get a hold of one of our operators. We're also available on the ABQ 311 app. And you can reach us through our city's website. There's ways to report and through Twitter and uh, through Alexa, an Alexa enabled device. Thank you. So, what happens when you call 911? Um, so, it doesn't necessarily follow the same path as your regular phone call. Um, the, when you dial 911 from a cell phone, uh, that hits your provider's tower. Uh, the provider then delivers that to a state switch. Um, and I'm probably using the wrong terminology, Erica, but 
for simplicity, um, that switch then determines uh, which uh, 911 center your call goes to. Uh, it delivers your call with the um, information as far as your location, um, some information from the phone, um, and then that switch in turn delivers that phone call to the PSAP or the emergency communication center. Um, there are a couple of ways in there where that call can and does get lost, um, but we do have ways of determining uh, if the call was delivered to the state switch or if it was delivered to our 911 system. Our phone system in uh, the communication center, it, it's kind of like caller ID on steroids. Um, and what it enables us to do is go back into the system and determine you know, whether that call was delivered to us or not. And if it wasn't, we can go back to the state. Uh, it, that is the same vendor, fortunately, uh, for the state switch. And we can determine if the uh, carrier delivered that phone call to the state. So uh, one of the things I always encourage people to do is if you, uh, you know, called 911, you didn't get through, uh, or it just rang and rang and rang, um, let us know about that because then we can trace that back and find out what happened to that phone call. And it enables us to discover things like uh, a bad trunk line, which we did have in the past where um, the uh, phone system had a bad incoming line that a call was delivered to um, and we got that fixed. But if, uh, if we're not aware of that, um, then we don't, uh, we don't necessarily see those problems. Um, when we talked about 911 and 242 cops, um, there was a question earlier about why does it take sometimes 10 minutes to get through 242 cops? Um, as Erica explained earlier, we answer 911 first. Um, when we have a, an event, say a crash on the freeway, and we get 50 to 100 calls on um, 911 or 242 cops, it kind of gums up the works as far as the number of operators that we have, um, and you will wait longer. Now, where that becomes problematic too is, for example, when we had the officer in ball shooting um, in the foothills, um, we got a number of calls about that. Now, you may be on the west side and not have any idea that this situation is going on, but you're calling 242 cops and, you know, I just don't have an operator to answer the phone at that point. So when we look at our service levels, um, we had a independent contractor come in and evaluate the comm center. And one of the things that he said that made a lot of sense to me is there's things that affect the call wait times. There's only three of them. Um, it's staffing, call volume, and call duration. And our phone calls average, we're on the line about two minutes with the people that call in, and that's within line with national standards. Um, call volume, uh, we handle about 1.1 million calls a year. Um, there's not anything we can control on the call volume, but I'll kind of get back to that in a little bit. Um, and then staffing. So the only thing that we can address in this formula is the staffing. Um, and we're working on that. Now, a couple things when you call 911 or 242 cops, uh, don't hang up and call back again thinking you didn't get through or you just got tired of waiting or whatever, because that puts you back on the end of the queue. Um, so in other words, if, if it's just like anywhere else. If you call, um, you're the next fourth person in line, you hang up and you call back again, now you're the ninth person in line. So we encourage you to stay on the line. Um, there's a couple different people that work up there in the comm center. Um, we have what is known as call takers uh, and call and dispatchers. Now, call takers are the ones answering the phones. Um, they're the ones getting the information, entering the call for service into the computer-aided dish, dispatch system and sending it to the dispatcher. The dispatcher is the one that's on the line uh, or on the radio, sorry, with the police officers and dispatching those officers. Um, and one of the things I like to stress too is people get frustrated sometimes with the amount of questions that we ask. There's a reason for all those questions, um, but it's not delaying your call getting sent up. What happens is, is the call taker will enter the information that we have enough to dispatch on the call, send that up to a dispatcher. And uh, while that call is being sent out, they will add 
comments to that call. There will be more information added to that call as they're getting the information from you. Um, what they do when they get the call is they triage it. We have uh, a priority-based system. Uh, we look at priorities one through five. Um, one of the things that's important is to understand that when we categorize something as a priority one, that's there is danger of imminent bodily harm. Um, you know, th this is a life and death emergency. That's a priority one. Um, two is a little bit lower than that. And Erica can go into the priorities um, all the way down to five. Um, now, if you call in and your call is graded as a priority three, and you're the next one in line, but in the meantime, while you're waiting for your call to be dispatched, two priority ones come in, um, we have to dispatch those first because that's the way the community wants it, we want it, and that's best practice. Uh, there's two national organizations that we follow, one's called NINA, uh, and the other one's called APCO, and that's essentially where we get our best practices from. Um, now, when we talk about the staffing, uh, we will be fully staffed, uh, Erica, correct me if I'm not, if we're not already, with call takers. We're very close. Um, when we hire the group in June, we will have um, filled all our 911 positions. We're hoping people promote to dispatch, and then we'll have more vacancies. But, yeah. Thank you. And the administration's been very good with uh, providing us the resources that we need uh, in order to address those staffing issues. Um, we constantly have positions open. Um, we test every two weeks um, and we hire as soon as possible. In other words, if even if we don't have another class coming up, we will bring somebody on board and uh, we used to call it pre-hire, but um, yeah, HR doesn't like that term for whatever reason. They're just either hired or not hired. Um, and uh, we were able to negotiate a pay increase uh, for dispatchers. We've got a hiring incentive. Um, we've got a referral incentive for any city employee who refers someone to the position. Um, we also established a screening queue. Um, and this brings me back to one of the things I talked about earlier. I said <coughs> on the uh, call volume. Now we introduced this screening, which is when somebody calls 242 COPS, not 911, 242 COPS, um, the person who answers the phone will screen that call and determine if it is genuinely a police call for service. Uh, what we found out when the uh, uh, contractor did the study was 60% of the calls coming into 242 COPS were not police related calls for service. Um, they are, I mean, it's bizarre some of the calls we get. Um, you know, we get calls on what day of the week it is, uh, what time of the day it is. Um, you know, it, it just, one of these days I'm gonna put together a, a portfolio of some of the calls that come in that really should not be coming in. So that can impact our call volume. Um, but we, we don't wanna dissuade people from calling the police. Um, you know, so we have to deal with that. But uh, again, I go back to the situations where if there's a crash on the freeway and I have 100 people calling in, um, it's, you're gonna wait longer than if there's nothing going on in the city. Um, so our current service levels, um, again, I mentioned we handle over a million calls a year. Um, and right now, now we're at a little over 80% of the 911 calls answered within 15 seconds. 81% uh, uh, of 911 calls answered within 20 seconds. 242 cops um, were roughly about 80% uh, within three minutes, um, 180 seconds. Now, the 180 seconds or the three minutes is a, a self-imposed goal or metric, so to speak. Um, we surveyed a lot of other departments in the city. Most major metropolitan cities don't track their non-emergency number uh, answer times. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something that we do because we feel it's necessary. Um, and, you know, our goal is to, to get to 90% of calls answered within 180 seconds. And understand, I'm not saying they all get answered within that time. Um, there are outliers. That's why it's an average. Um, and we have to account again for those situations where uh, we're just getting bombarded with calls. Um, recruiting, um, we are hiring. Uh, I'm 
hiring until somebody tells me to stop hiring and that hasn't happened yet. Um, so we're doing job fairs, we're utilizing social media, we're gonna have an advertising campaign come out. Uh, we have filmed commercials. Um, and uh, one of the other things we've done is looked at technology. Um, <clears throat> we just started uh, with a new radio system last year. Um, that is a godsend as uh, the old radio system was on its last legs and we were literally getting parts for that radio system off of eBay to keep it going. Um, but thankfully we have a new system. Uh, what this system will enable us to do in the future is dispatch by GPS location. Um, so the officers will be tracked by GPS and it won't necessarily be the officer whose beat it is that gets dispatched the call. It'll be the officer who's closest to that call. Um, and that should cut down on response times. Um, we have a new system out. If you've called 242 COPS or 911, you have gotten uh, a survey. That's a, we call, the company's called Spider Tech. And it's very much like um, any other business where you would get a survey after you uh, were a customer. Uh, we ask you a few questions. And one of the first questions is, um, you know, how was your experience with the person who took your call? Later on down, you're going to get asked about, um, you know, how was your experience with the officer? Uh, you'll be asked uh, if you want to provide some demographic information, you can do so. And then you'll get asked to provide any other information um, that uh, you want to provide for feedback. And I do go through all of those uh, and uh, utilize that information to improve our processes. Late this, this year, uh, we'll have a new CAD system. Oh, let me go back to spider tech. One of the things that we used to do that this has proved beneficial with is if there was a delay in dispatching your call, uh, one of the employees in the comm center would call back and advise you of the delay. Uh, the spider tech system does that automatically. So now I don't have uh, a dispatcher having to call uh, people back and it's automatically done by the system with a text message. Um, and right now, I think we're at a four out of five uh, when we talk about communication center personnel on how people rate them. Um, so the CAD system uh, in, should be coming at the end of this year. I talked about the location-based uh, dispatching and our phone system is gonna be upgraded uh, later on this year too. Um, and uh, Erica, if you wanna go into the phone system in a little bit, but um, you know, I just wanna say that you know, the, the communication center personnel are really the heroes of our community. Um, they are right now working a lot of hours a lot of overtime in order to maintain these service levels. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the personnel that are up there doing this work. Um, I have a little bit of insight as I started my career as a dispatcher many, many years ago. Um, we didn't have computers. We had to etch it on a stone tablet and hand it to somebody else. And then we had a but anyway, I digress. Um, but uh, yes, we understand that we want to get the times down. There will always be times when it takes a little bit longer than others just based on call volume because we're trying to hit that sweet spot to where I don't have 100 employees sitting around for nine hours doing nothing and then having them all work uh, for the three or four minutes that we have that one incident. Um, it's not a, a very good use of taxpayer money. But then again, I don't want people to wait. So we're trying to find that sweet spot in there where staffing is. Uh, once these people get out of training um, and we're at fully, uh, we're fully staffed, then we will look at our performance metrics at that time and see if we need to increase that staffing. Um, and uh, Erica, did you want to talk about the upgraded phone system? Sure. And we're targeting after Balloon Fiesta. We're starting the project now with biweekly calls to prepare to upgrade our existing phone system. Um, it'll be all new hardware and the most updated software. And it's gonna allow us to do some things that uh, we can't currently do. One of them is a piece of software that will do automated callbacks on 911 hangups. Currently, when you call 911 and if you hang up, if the call reaches us and you hang up before we answer you, we get delivered an abandoned call. The screen changes color to let us know it's an abandoned call and we attempt to call you back. The system that's gonna come with this um, upgrade 
is going to automate that. So I'm not having to use a staff member to do that. It'll The system will ask you if you still have an emergency and if so, it'll route you back to 911. And if not, it'll end the call. So that saves some staff to be answering live on other calls. The other thing that we're instituting in Albuquerque is we in the state of New Mexico do not have text to 911 as of yet. And we're looking at implementing an over the top solution so people can text us on 911. Um, right now, that functionality isn't an option because of the statewide network, and they're going to be upgrading it in a year or two, but we didn't want to wait, and so that's just a couple of the things that are coming. And, you know, we, um, we suffered the same uh, impact from COVID and, um, you know, people uh, deciding, you know, to remain unemployed as every other sector uh, of employment. Um, and we're still trying to recover from that as well. Um, the problem with uh, the emergency communication center is it, it's not something that can be worked from home. Um, and unfortunately we have to have them all in the same room together. We use social distancing as much as we could. Uh, and uh, you know, we went through a ton of Clorox wipes, uh, use masks, but unfortunately it did, uh, it did impact us up there as well. So. Hopefully, as we come out of COVID and uh, are returning to normal, uh, we, you know, we'll be able to see, um, see, see an improvement in some of those issues. And Erica, and I'm always going to push for recruiting. Erica, did you want to, I saw there was a question, and I don't know if it got answered about the pay. Um, I did answer it. Um, our starting pay for a 911 operator is $21.24 per hour after, within the first year, usually sooner rather than later. They also get certified at the state level and that increases pay $2 an hour. And then at the end of a year when probation is over, there's a little bit of a, um, an increase as well. And for dispatcher, we start at 22.30 an hour. Um, I might've typed in the wrong, well, anyway, it's 22.30 an hour. I added the hyperlink um, within the chat where it, it's can you answer the call which shows a video of the center and it will also take you to the application the positions are called telecommunicator one and telecommunicator two that's where it's kind of confusing but we are telecommunicators we're doing phone and we're communicating and so that's how this industry has named them as telecommunicators thank you erica and uh carrie uh, and that that's pretty much covers everything. Do you think, did I miss anything, guys? Oh, TRU, Telephone Reporting Unit and uh, Online Reports uh, and the uh, app. The app we're going to be improving here shortly. Erica, if you want to go over that. There is a current app that that we're using that is time for an upgrade. It needs to be updated. And we are working with the vendor where we're gonna be releasing, hopefully within the next few weeks, as soon as I get my staff all uploaded to it and trained on it, it'll be a new app that will um, give you an easier way to add pictures than the current app. And you'll still have one way or two way communication with us. So a press release will be going out about that. And I'm sure also with the um, CPC councils, it'll probably go to you first because we'd like to have a, a burn in or a trial period just to see what the demand is and if there are any issues, but it's implemented at other cities as well. And then telephone reporting unit, that's uh, if you call two for two cops and you need to, you just basically need a report written, um, that is a, an available service. And also online, you can do a report. Um, one of the things that we get is, you know, I just need a report for my insurance company. Um, I know there's no evidence or, uh, you know, I just want to get this done and over with so I can send it. And um, that's something that we can do online. Now I've heard people talk about before that somehow that that's, we're not counting those, that's factually inaccurate. Uh, the online reporting system is directly linked to our records management system. 
the TRU reports are linked to the records management system. So as those reports are entered, they are going directly into the system that we use to report our stats, uh, crime stats to the FBI on. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it unless we have any other questions. It appears that all the questions in the Q&A were answered. Um, here's another one. On ABQ 311, I was falsely accused of illegal fireworks. How do you handle false accusations? Sorry, I had to get off mute. That is a very good question um, that happened to me. It is difficult at times for um, where the fireworks are located when somebody calls it in and they, they give an address that they think is happening and it really isn't. Um, AFR will send notification via a letter to the address to cease and desist. And if it continues, they'll absolutely follow up. So if it's something that you would like to have removed uh, from the ABQ 311 app, please don't hesitate to contact 311 directly. And we can move, uh, work directly with the app who it runs our app for us and get that information taken down. So um, it, the, they won't do anything criminally to you immediately. That's really just to talk to you about how to be safe and handling fireworks. Um, so it shouldn't escalate, but if you're concerned, by all means, call us and we'll work with c -Click Fix, which is the uh, partner with the ABQ 311 app, and we'll get it taken down for you. Okay. Does anyone else in the chat have any questions in the attendee room? Have any questions right now? Okay, Mona, I guess we're... I, th I think we're done. Um, doesn't appear as though we have any other questions. Um, any comments or any, any last, last minute words? <laughs> Thank you all for um, attending, for providing um, some great information. I absolutely appreciate it and look forward to doing this and getting a little bit more comfortable with it in the future. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to thank Chief Riego and I'd like to thank Erica Wilson and Carrie Prothero as well because we do get these questions in a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, CPC meetings around the city. So now I can direct them this link, and I say, well, you can watch the first hour. You'll have all the information you need. So excellent presentation. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, I guess if there's nothing else, we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you, officers and everyone else.